We were stuck in home and bored, so we made our very own penny hockey rink. But before we get to that, it's time for a make or break. Hey guys, welcome back to Maker Break, where we share our favorite Maker videos of the week, and then we challenge ourselves to build a project of our own. I'm Rob. And I'm Kaylee. I'm filling in for Sarah this week. This week we have a scrap wood ping pong table. A giant game of Jenga. Some clever cord management from Zach. And a bunch more. Let's get to it. Starting us off is Eric Sorensen, who shared his top five spring projects for 2020. They include some planter boxes, a mini firewood shed, and even a folding sawhorse. Man, I'm glad it's spring in here. Me too. Our next project is from Andrew Klein, who made this awesome outdoor ping pong table from scrap wood. Make me one. All right, I can't just make you everything we feature on the show. Why not? Next, we have Shayna from Shayna's Workshop, who makes a giant game of Jenga out of two by fours. And finally, one of my favorite makers, Mark Rober. As he started a new science series on YouTube for kids, he's going to make three classes a week. The latest one answers, when I fart, do I lose weight? Why do you need to know the answer to that? Because of science. <laughs> All right, good answer. For this week's Meet a Maker, we're joined by Zach from Zach Builds. Hi, Zach. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Today, I'm going to be showing you my TV stand slash entertainment unit. And this is a project I made a couple years ago because, well, I needed somewhere to put my TV. I'll spare you guys every little detail of this project. Instead, I want to focus on one key feature. You guys hate clutter, right? Okay, sorry, stupid question. Everybody hates clutter. When I designed this TV stand, I knew that I wanted it to look really minimal, and that meant not having a bunch of cords and AV equipment cluttering it up. That's why I included this piece of plywood right here. From the front, it just looks like a normal piece of maple, right? But around back, around back, we have a little bit of a different story. Whoa, that's cool. So that same piece of plywood functions as a mounting point for all my AV equipment. So over here, I have my PlayStation, which I've mounted to it using a wall bracket I got off Amazon. Over here, I have a power bar that powers everything on the TV stand and runs a single cable back to the wall outlet. I mounted that with double-sided tape. Down here, I have my amplifier for the speakers. Uh, over in this blank spot here, I used to have an Android TV box, but I've since got rid of it because my new TV has that integrated into it. So I have a little bit of room to expand in the future. And then I also have all these little cable ties to help manage the cables and keep everything looking very clean from the front. I've got something like that hidden on the backside of basically everything I've ever built. The backside of furniture is a great place to hide power strips and USB charging hubs. It really helps to decrease the clutter around the house and keep everything looking nice and tidy. So I hope you guys and your audience enjoyed that tip and I will see you guys later. Peace. Thanks so much for sharing your TV stand with us, Zach. We recently did the same thing with our charging station using panels to hide all the messy cords. Zach makes a lot of cool stuff. If you want to see it for yourself, you can find him at Zach Builds on Instagram and YouTube. Speaking of Instagram, it's time to stop by for a few of our favorite posts. Can I use one of Zach's posts? Sure, go ahead. Zach made this really awesome table with a live edge walnut slab and some wormy maple. That kind of sounds gross. So actually, wormy maple is actually pretty, really pretty stuff. So it's a tree and these ambrosia beetles crawl inside and they lay larvae in there and the larvae eat their way out and makes all these really cool patterns you can see in the wood. So it doesn't just sound gross, it is gross. <laughs> sure. Scott from Scott's Mini Workshop shared a video of him turning an oval bowl. Look at that thing. And finally, Matthew from Beaten Barn Board shared a white baby gate project that is adorable. You never made me one of those. Uh, hey, it's not too late. We can make one to keep your baby dolls in the room. Sounds like a plan. All right, it's time for our own project this week. Yeah, we built our very own penny hockey game. Yep, and here's how we did it. We started with a three quarter inch piece of plywood and measured out our hockey rink. Yeah, most of the penny hockey designs we found are shaped like a sheet of paper. But we're hockey fans. Right! So we chose to scale ours down from an actual hockey rink, which is 85 feet by 200 feet. We made ours 8.5 inches by 20 inches. Once we got our dimensions marked out, I used a table saw to cut the pieces we needed. I'm not allowed to use this saw, so I stayed safely back at the bench. Now that we had our rough pieces, we set them together to make sure it was all going to fit. 
Yep, then I marked the length of the end pieces so Dad could cut them on the miter saw. They were a perfect fit. Now it's time for me to use a power tool. I got to sand! <laughs> yep, and she did great. Uh, yeah, of course I did. With all our pieces sanded, it was time to mark off all the holes for the dowel rods. The rods will be our little hockey players. Yep, and they have to be in exactly the right spot. So we had a half inch dowel, so we drilled half inch holes with a spade bit. That looked dangerous to me, so I decided to let Dad drill them. That's true, but Kaylee is a master of the heart vacuum. I will gladly use any power tool you'll let me. I believe you. The last holes were for the goal, which we drilled out with a 1 and 1 8 inch hole saw. The spade bit left some pretty rough holes, so I used a rolled up piece of sandpaper to get rid of the splinters. After that, I grabbed our dowel rod and cut our hockey players. That sounds more terrifying than it really is. <laughs> yeah, we placed the pegs in the holes to see how they looked. And they looked good. <laughs> it was finally time to glue everything up. We used a few Bessie clamps to hold it together while it dried. After we had the sides in place, we carefully glued in all of our hockey players. I like gluing things up. It's messy. Yeah, but it's not supposed to be, but yeah, we're messy. After that, we just had to wait for it all to dry. The next morning, we did a bit of sanding and then put these cute little feet on the bottom so it wouldn't scratch up mom's table. Then it was time to play penny hockey. I'm the queen of penny hockey. Is there a queen of penny hockey? <laughs> there is now. <laughs> that was really fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I appreciate you filling in for Sarah this week. My pleasure. All right, before we go, we need to pick our winner of this week's heart hand tools. Michelle Marshall shared this beautiful set of shelves she made out of wood and steel pipes. Yep, congratulations, Michelle. We'll reach out to you and get your info and get the tools on their way. For this week, we're giving away a heart 40 volt cordless brushless attachment capable 15 inch string trimmer kit. That's right, by the way, she picked that. Perfect for spring, right? And how do you enter, Kaylee? That's easy. You just have to leave a comment sharing a YouTube maker you like to watch. Yep, you can do that either on the comments on our YouTube video or on Facebook. That sounds easy enough. Thanks so much for helping me this week, Kaylee. You did great. No problem. Break's over. Let's make something. <laughs> <laughs>